and recording <laughs> episode one, <laughs> the Fantastic. podcast that nobody asked for. Cheers on the podcast that no one asked for. Love this idea. <laughs> Three, two, two one. <laughs> Welcome to our new podcast, the podcast that nobody asked for, but we're here doing it anyway. Yeah, that's what it's going to be called. I was literally thinking on the way, it's just basically going to be one of our phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but just for everyone else to listen into. Yeah, just listen in. We talk shit. So episode one, we're just going to do a bit of an intro. And mm-hmm. we are just trying to chat shit, basically. Yeah, we'll chat shit. We'll put a few question boxes up mm-hmm. on the internet to see... On the internet. Oh, on the internet. <laughs> on Instagram <laughs> to see what people have got to ask us. And we've Let, got a few bits and pieces. Let's be honest, I've pretty much taught, taught you how to use the internet. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was still on MySpace when I met you. Fuck <laughs> um, So let's do a little bit of an intro. Um, because people probably know us from like competing um obviously with me sharing my whole life on instagram <laughs> yeah um but i was thinking if you do a bit of an intro to you i do a bit of an intro to me i think like most people watching this probably do know us a little bit but some people might not some people might not some people might know you and not me and some people may know me and not you yes so just a quick intro then to you yeah so obviously uh, not obviously cause that's why you're listening to it <laughs> I'm just telling you now. <laughs> Obviously, you should know who I am. <laughs> Obviously, not that obvious. Yeah, so um, I'm an ex-bodybuilder, ex-Mr. Universe, um, bodybuilding between 2008 and 2019 when I retired. Um, Mr. Universe winner, professional bodybuilder in PCA, NABBA, um, and now just a contest coach. Generally, run a coaching company called Team DW, um, and we focus on getting people ready to stage, some people for lifestyle, um, for, um, holiday preps, mm. anything really around that, but mainly kind of competing and um, bikini and figure and things like that. That's how me and Georgie met. That is how we met. It must have been maybe three years. Oh, yeah, over three years now. Yeah, wow. Three years crazy. ago. Um, we met through coaching. She came to me for coaching. Obviously, we did quite well, which she'll probably tell you about in a minute with our intro. <laughs> um, and yeah, since then, it's just been all good. Became very good friends over the few years. Yes. That we've known each other. Um, and now, we are sat in a random, a random place in the middle of nowhere filming a podcast that nobody wanted. <laughs> <laughs> but again. Brilliant. Um, love it. Okay, so intro to me, I'm Georgie. I own a coach by Georgie, which is my coaching business. I've been a coach now for six, nearly seven years. Uh, ex-bodybuilder. Yeah, retired. Yes. I can finally say it. <laughs> Buzzing. Um, retired bodybuilder. I competed for two years. Wow, it was it only two yeah, years? Yeah, it was just two years. It was intense, Fuck though. Sake. There was a lot happening in them in two and years. Out. See you later. I <laughs> uh, did a first time as prep in June 2022. One. 2021. No, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Became PCA pro that year. Awesome. And then did a couple of pro shows last year. Mm-hmm. Um, did pretty well. Won the Pro World Championships. Won the Pro World Championships, which is always an amazing achievement. People like, you did so well. I'm like, oh, did I? But actually, it was pretty (laughs) mad, to be fair. Um, And have been post-show for maybe nine, ten months now. Yeah. That's crazy. How's the reverse? (laughs) The reverse was really great. (laughs) We'll talk about that. I feel like we'll talk a little bit about, like, our coaching relationship. But, um, yeah, I'm just retired now, like, just living the life. Um, Very much back to a balanced lifestyle. Post competing, I mean, never say never. I always say this, but I don't see myself competing anytime soon. It's always there if you want it, but you, you kind of scratch that itch, didn't you? You did, the you thing did everything is, you can really do within that. Yeah, I could definitely feel like I could go back. Um, but for me, I just feel like if I go back, I'm probably not going to do as well. Well, what is there to do? I've got no redemption to make. Yeah, you what know is when people are like, oh, redemption, like go back and smash it. Like, I literally don't have any. Yeah, and you was in it as well. You was yeah it i was four, literally three four years straight whatever it was my it. whole life wasn't it yeah so and you've smashed that and now obviously lifestyle is your passion of yeah course. of course that's where your business is and everything else and obviously yes. you're back smashing that not that mm-hmm. you want smashing it but you're smashing that again and doing it yourself yeah and i just feel like in terms of bodybuilding i feel like bodybuilding does have a shelf life yeah yeah you don't want to drag it on too long i mean i have taken the piss for two years but <laughs> Yeah, two years is fast. I did do I did do one prep and then it obviously got cancelled. Yeah, COVID. you was in it longer because COVID ripped you off for a yeah, couple of years, didn't it? But I always so. think, like, imagine if I actually did that show because, wow, I wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, he was not as good. But then you did another season. Yeah, this is true. Funny story, actually. I don't think we've ever said this out loud, but you remember I actually messaged you originally for a coach. And then I, I talk fucking... about this all the time. Do talk you? about this all the time. <laughs> I literally fucking aired you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she uh, messaged me in 2019 for coaching and then blew me out. <laughs> Went with a different coach. Went with a different coach. 
I just came back and though. then came crawling back oh sorry <laughs> missed, missed your DM Don't, yeah missed would the you DM mind coaching you me um, but yeah no we became such good friends didn't we over the course of that time yeah um, and I think like I think one of the questions actually we'll go on to this is obviously are we still working together it's one of the questions that come through when I put a box up earlier so are no. you still coaching Georgie absolutely not fuck that for a laugh no we kept, we did do, we done the reverse didn't we after November I think we did we stay together to like January ish or mm, and to like be that. fair that reverse went very well yeah because it was kind of already there weren't we we'd done a, it was a good prep on it really it was a lot we did a longer one but well I had a good prep because I didn't I wasn't hungry at all <laughs> It's funny because I'm pretty sure my first prep, I was like, I'm never doing a long prep like this again. Yeah, because obviously yeah, yeah. my first time of show was in June and then my finals was in October, I still wasn't remember it? the conversation. Don't do that. Yeah. I'm yeah, well, about- <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was pushing you to start my prep about six weeks early the following year. Yeah. Um, but I did drag that out because I think my first show was in October and my last show was in November. Yeah, and then you wanted to start dead early, didn't you? I did want you were to sick of off season, so we made an early start. Just Not the biggest fan of off season, you know. No, he was big. He was <laughs> filled up, man. <laughs> Fuck's sake! You look how much muscle you got on. Yeah, to be fair, we did well in that off season, didn't we? Yeah. Like to be fair, if you compared my first timers physique to my world's physique, yeah, it was worlds apart. The f- oh, I like what you did there. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think my reverse went well, way better than any other reverse I've done because yeah. I knew that I was exiting bodybuilding. Yeah, so the casualties didn't matter too much, but you did well with it, and then you came back for a week. <laughs> <laughs> they knows about this. <laughs> Did they not? <laughs> she didn't come back for a week. So I was like, "What was the reasoning?" You just oh, get I was back just like, into it, I just, just need routine. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah, literally yeah. lost my head, hadn't I? Like the beginning of this year was a bit pretty rough, and yeah. I was like, oh, "I'm just going to get back into bodybuilding. Like I'm not going to do a show, but I want to follow a meal plan." So I sent you a plan, and after a week, he was like, "Nah, fuck that." <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I think it's difficult because we're such close friends It now. worked, though. Yeah, I mean... It worked. It got you back on track. Yeah, it, it did get me back that. on track, yeah. yeah and to be fair, since then, things have been good. Yeah. Um, but I just live, like, such a balanced lifestyle now. But you're a bit like that, aren't you? Like, obviously, you tell people to eat chicken and rice six times a day, but you don't eat chicken and rice six times a day. Funnily enough, I've just oh. gone back to it a little bit. Oh, Funnily for enough, a week. <laughs> no, I actually have because I, I feel so much better. Mm. So this has only been for the last um, couple of months, probably. So after I retired in, so for anyone that doesn't know, which you probably were, uh, after 2019, I continued my off season for quite a long time. Was come, that your last show? Yeah. yeah. And then I was going to come back in 2021, but the, uh, they're all fucked up with the timings. Like the show got called off. And so the prep kind of got delayed into 2022. So I was going to do 2022 because mm. there wasn't enough time left in 2021 by the time they made some announcements with the COVID thing and all that. Um, and then... In December, November, December 21, um, I tore my bicep off. Yes, I remember yeah. this. So not <laughs> even in the gym, behavior. standard behaviour. What was it, lifting some furniture? Throwing, I was throwing a washing machine into the that back of it. a car, yeah. Mm. Um, so I was just cl- trying to get the washing machine into the back of the car. Got stuck on the seats because the seats were folded down in the back. I was like 22 stone at the time. Climbed into the back footwell in a two-door car, my dad's car, a little polo, whatever it was. Tried to reach over the seats to like lift it up, you know, it got stuck on the, where the seats fall down. Yeah. And it was one of them big concrete bottom ones, you oh know, God. the old fashioned ones, because yeah. when I moved in my, our new house. So when we moved, it was left down the side of the house, so I thought, fucking take it to tip and that. So tried to put it in the car, got stuck, I climbed in, was reaching over the seats to lift it like that. And then my dad lifted the other end and it just went boom, oh. like that. And I was like, <gasps> please tell me that that was just a bit of scar tissue in my arm. And I got out of the car and went like that and it just went, Oh my God. <laughs> prep cancelled then. Yeah, so that was it. So yeah, that was I was going to prep the next year. Um, and then I just thought, like, I'd had enough anyways. Like, any anybody who's been, like, a big super heavyweight, like, when you speak to them, they'll tell you. Yeah. Like, I was, I was sleeping with a CPAP on every night. I couldn't sleep without a CPAP. Which, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, is literally a mask, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a breathing mask. So it, when, when you get, like, kind of really heavy, you, your airways close up when you fall to sleep. Yeah. So it's, like, dangerous as well. I mean... You probably won't die, but you can die. Yeah, of course. But it just wrecks your sleep because what happens is your airway shuts and then your inner brain wakes up. You don't wake up, but your brain wakes up to open the airway up and then it opens it up and then it goes back to sleep. So like when I got a sleep test done, out of seven and a half hours in bed, I got something like 35 minutes sleep. (gasps) I woke up every 58 seconds on average across the night. open the thing. I got two stints of sleep. It was like, it was something like 17 minutes and... 12 minutes or whatever it was it was something wow. like stupid optimal 
Yeah, non optimal. I felt like ass all the time. As soon as I got the machine on, I felt great. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be like that. I've got a little daughter running yeah, around. Course. She's like, whatever she was at the time, two years old. So I'm feeling guilty knowing I'm putting myself under pressure and all the rest of it. Um, possibly taking years off my life, taking steroids and all the things that we do. Mm -hmm. um, so I just thought, you know what, when the arm come off, I just thought, fuck it, that's it. I feel like that whole washing machine thing was actually a bit of a blessing in disguise for you. Yeah, devastated be at the time. Of course, as you would be. But strangely, and I ain't really said this to anyone particularly, but um, a few days later, I felt like relieved. Yeah. So like, it was almost as if all this subconscious stuff had built up in my mind that I knew I shouldn't be doing what I was doing. I was feeling guilty on Daphne all the time. Mm. Blah, 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 blah. And then when it come off, I thought, I can Fuck. stop. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you've had permission to stop Yeah, and it was well. like a way of stopping. Because yeah, I knew course. I had to have like four months out with the operation and all the rest of it, whatever. Because obviously as a prep coach, you kind of feel the pressure to still be competing and still stay relevant, right? In a way. Uh, mm, kind really. of, yeah. I suppose, yeah. It didn't end up my mind that much, but it... A little bit, I suppose. So what was the driver for that last prep then? Like, what was the reason that you wanted Just to do Just to see it? it off. Yeah. See it off. Yeah. That was like, I'd done 11 seasons. 11? Yeah, 11. 2008 into 2019. Um, I just wanted one more for the road. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, and that was it. That was all it was for. Mm. I knew I was a lot bigger. I was going to be way bigger. Yeah. Like, way bigger as well. Because you remember how big I was when you met you. I was, it was, I was your PCA holes. Was that a pro show? Must have been. Yeah, so that was when you seen me on stage. But I mean, mm. when you come up in them off seasons, oh, when I yeah. first met you, I'd, yeah, I'd put yeah. so much size on. I thought, I need to see what this looks you like. You've seen field. me from like this to like this massive. <laughs> and I've literally seen you from tiny to massive as well. <laughs> massive to tiny, yeah. Um, so, yeah. But do you feel healthier and fitter now that you're just normal I, again? I feel like I've got, I feel amazing. Yeah. yeah. I've, never felt, I've never felt this good because I was yeah. pushing to get bigger since I was 18. Yeah. Every minute of every day, all I thought about was getting bigger. Or you're in a prep. Yeah. I was in a prep. I was mm. trying to get bigger. I was in a prep. I was trying to get bigger. There was no middle ground ever for that yeah. full time. So then I've come out of it. I've lost uh, about four and a half stone now. <sighs> probably a lot, a lot of that muscle and water and yeah. what have you. Because I'm about a similar probably bodily composition, to be fair. Uh, but yeah, anyway, after I'd torn that off in 2021, I went through a weird phase because I got my bicep put back on. Yes, I remember And that. I just thought, I'm not training. Mm. I just thought, fuck it. Mm. I, I, and then... Straight after that, you'll probably remember I got my shoulder operated on. I had a yeah. frozen shoulder for yeah. quite a lot of years as yeah. well, which I was training with, which was no fun. Um, I got the shoulder, frozen shoulder um, decapsulated or something like they call it, where they take it all out and thingy it. Um, I got that done. And then I just kind of milled about for about mm. six months. And then, Which was needed because we've obviously just done, what, it was 11 years of just being under pressure of bodybuilding. Yeah, it was strange because, like I say, from being 18 years old, the minute I walked into a gym, there's, there was not one day where I didn't think about trying to get bigger yeah. or better. Not yeah. one week. Because you know what it's like when you're bodybuilding, you're fucking obsessed. obsessed. From the minute you mm -hmm. go wake up to the minute you go to bed, I didn't think about anything else. So then that was 18, and then I was 36, <laughs> 35 when that happened, whatever I was. Mm. So... That, how many years is that about thinking about trying to get bigger every minute of every day? So yeah. then I just felt like, well, I don't want to go. What's the point in going to the gym? Why am I training if That's... I'm not trying to get bigger? Mm. It was like a, a bizarre thing. And I knew I'd go to this. I said to some of my pals at the time, I reckon it's going to take me about a year to, to come back to normal. But honestly, for all that time, I was thinking, I'm never training again. So obviously, I'm never going to be on your level with that because I only did it for like, what, three years? So mm. with off seasons, I think it was about three. Well, I was into body for body for maybe like three or four years. But like the sense that like the loss of identity at the end of that, I was literally going to the gym thinking, why the fuck am I yeah. here? I don't even want to be here. Because I was trying to, because I'm trying to lose muscle, yeah, which I am actually it. doing at the moment. Like I am trying to lose muscle on my upper. Like I'm not training to failure really. Yeah. And I was just like, what's the fucking point in being here? Yeah. And it's weird because you kind of like lose your love for it. But then I'm like, well, no, because I loved training before bodybuilding. Crazy. It just seemed pointless because you're like, you're just pushing on weight and you're thinking, why? Why am I pushing it? If I'm not trying to get bigger by pushing this weight, what why am, am I doing I with it? it? In it, and I'd literally be like, oh, it kind of hurts now, so I'm just going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Legit, my yeah. mindset for like the last. And I don't know if you'll be the same as me you probably am but there's no middle there's like there's a hundred and a zero and yeah. then there's like the bit in the middle is pointless yeah. so you're having one or the other i'm then, so chilled with it now though like you're probably the same i don't have any kind of like routine in terms of i just train like maybe three four times yeah i train four times so this is what i was going to come to so the beginning of this year at 23 
I thought, do you know what? I want to go back to the gym. Sick. And I was training in that time, don't get me wrong, but not. Properly, properly. I was missing weeks and mm. I was this and that. And I was just fully focused on coaching. That's mm. literally, I went obsessed mm-hmm. with my coaching, which obviously worked because it's, it's gone quite well. Well, yeah, because you've gone from just you to, yeah, to three of you now. Yeah, three Sick. of us. And obviously it's gone really well. So obviously putting your effort into something does pay off. But that's where my thingy went. And then in January, I just thought, I feel shit. My body feels mm. shit. Um, not so much my mind because strangely I don't really need training for my mind I don't I can my mind's fine no matter what mm. it doesn't seem to affect it but my body felt like shit I felt like um lethargic just like sticks in jelly I just it was just like fucking weird what? like nothing <laughs> it was just fucking bizarre my so, client said this once and I always refer to it like custard in a carrier bag <laughs> Sort of, it? yeah. It was like even getting up off the couch, everything just felt like oh wrong. Do you know, because I've been so like compact into my yeah, body for so oh long. It's so weird. So I thought, yeah, so I wanted to go back training. And then I've actually really got into it. I train four times a week. Mm. Um, I have an arm day in there now, which is a glory session, which is fun. Push pull legs <laughs> and then just an arm session. Um, I've gone back to eating really well over the last few months. I actually eat like a really clean bodybuilder six days wow. a week. Eggs, cheat chicken. Have you got a cheat day then? Um, yeah, yes. eggs, chicken, <laughs> um, oats, all the thing. I fast till about two o'clock. Generally. Really? I won't call it fasting. I just don't eat till two o'clock because I'm an eater. So if I start eating at eight o'clock in the morning, mm. I'm, I'm back eating 5,000 calories mm. again and I don't need it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I start eating about two and I probably eat about two and a half thousand calories at the very most. Really? Um, I've not totted it up. It's not a lot. It's, I, I would be surprised if it's <sighs> over two, three, something that's like that. That's low for you, surely. Yeah, that's super low, yeah. But that's how I feel good now. Mm. So I do that, I train about tea time, um, and then on a Sunday night, which is usually my day off because I work Saturday, so I have Sunday mm. night as a night off, I'll just have whatever, pizza or burger or whatever I want. Mm. And then if I don't do that now, I feel like shit. So if I eat any shit for the week... You just feel like awful. I feel like ass. My brain doesn't work properly. I don't sleep properly. You know when like people get old, like your mum and dad's and that, and they used to see me eating all clean food and they say, oh, yeah, why the fuck are you, you eating think, Why are you eating veg? like that all the time? Yeah. Why are you always eating veg and like yeah. meals and you don't want to eat crap? You get it. Because actually you It starts to so happen to you, yeah. Now I'm, I'm, I'm 37 now. Maybe I'm starting to get a little bit older, but my brain's works different. So when I'm, um, if I don't eat clean, I feel like dog shit. That's like me now. Like I don't track my calories all day every day like i'll track the odd thing for instagram like mm. to show what i'm eating but um i still eat relatively similar to how i did yeah. when i was i'm competing. still full meal plan <laughs> don't get not full meal plan I am. That. <laughs> you are i have protein bar now i feel like i'm i'm literally all the protein bars i missed in the time being prepped by you You're making i'm up making for up for it <laughs> um but yeah i just like when i eat shit i just honestly feel shit and this is something i always say to my clients as well like you are what you eat and at yeah. the end of the day, like, yes, I don't have any physique goals now. Like, I was actually on a call with someone. Um, we're launching something really exciting soon, and he was doing my content review. And he was like, you don't really post any physique updates anymore. And I was like, yeah, because I just, not that I don't care, because I do care about the way I look, but, like, I'm eating well, and, like, I'm still hitting 10K steps. I'm still that. looking after my yeah, body yeah. because I want to feel good in myself. Yeah. But, like, honestly, like, initially, I was so worried about, like, post-competing life. But actually, it's just gone so well. Yeah. It is good. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, I don't know about what it's like for you, but all all I care about now is thinking. So before all yeah. I used to care about was performing. Now all I care about thinking, which mm. is my performing mm. for my clients. Because mm. if I like, say after that Sunday night, I have it on Sunday night on purpose because I don't have check-ins on a Monday. Mm. My brain's cloudy. Wow. Not cloudy, not like I'm hungover, but it's not as good on a Monday. Mm. And if I did that for the week, I'd notice that when I'm going through my check-ins and stuff, I'm not as sharp. Do you know what I mean? So I'm all, I'm yeah. all about brain performance. When now. you're in good routine, eating well, training like how you want to train, wow, work is so much more productive. Yeah, sleep better, like, performance, when, and environment as well. Like obviously for you, like, I suppose you just have your wife and child, but like I just feel like when I'm in the right environment as well, like I literally just I feel on top of the world. It's mad how it comes back like that, isn't it? Yeah, I think that little phase post competing is like a lost slash rebellious slash. Because I ate, Did clean, I I ate clean a lot when I was bodybuilding. Not in the early days, but towards the end, I ate clean off yeah. seasons. Like, because I was eating so much, you can't really eat shit. You can't really anyway. eat shit, yeah. Um, so I think it was like a little rebellion phase. Mm. Yeah, no, I've definitely gone through like waves. Don't get me wrong, post show wasn't perfect, but I don't know. I just feel like, I, I do, because I have so many eyes on me on social media as well, I was like, I can't get fat. <laughs> because if I get fat, I literally don't have off season as an excuse because yeah. I'm not even going into an off season. So I think I competed at 115 pounds. I've never been heavier than like 131. Yeah. Which is good, man, because you were shredded at 115 as well. But I probably lost a bit of muscle there as well. Yeah, so if you was 20 pound above stage weight, 
and lost some well muscle. i think one three five is my most something like that so yeah. like basically i've only ever been 20 but i'm pound 20 up. pound of fat above stage weight that's pretty good, decent that's it's only just done enough bear in mind i was so diced yeah exactly I yeah. back at those Straight videos the i think you must like dad don't think my italians are gonna come through and i'm like there's fucking piano the strings you, in your ass cheeks what do you mean i literally what do you went mean? to texas thinking i was fat <laughs> And I literally look back at the videos like, are you okay? Um, because, yeah, I started to lose my head a little bit towards the end of that prep. I was so done when I, because I knew I wasn't carrying on. Yeah. Like I said this to you, didn't I? Like, no one knows this. But I was like, fuck Texas, I don't want to go. <laughs> I was like, I can't do this prep anymore. And I was like, I have to go because I paid for the whole thing now. So yeah. I'm glad I did it, obviously, because that was pretty cool. But, um, yeah, crazy, man. Like, competing feels like such a blur. It just feels like it didn't even happen to me. But yeah. honestly, one of the best things I've ever done, and I've literally learned so much from it. You take a lot from it, I think. Oh, it's honestly the best thing I've ever done. I notice. I mean, I did it since I was basically a child because I was eighteen. Mm, I was a child. Mm, do you know what I mean? Mm. So I don't know anything else. But I mean, I'm, I suppose that is where my my brain's uniform. Because when I was a kid, I'd probably told you this before. I don't know, but I did karate. Yeah, when yeah. When I was a kid, yeah, and I was a black belt in karate. Yeah, yeah, when I was like yeah, eleven yeah. or whatever, I started when I was like five, um, and I was obsessed with that. Obsessed in the same way bodybuilding was. It's all I read. Yeah. It's all I looked for on yeah. TV. It was go through the telly magazine on a Friday night when it come in the newspaper Looking or the Saturday or whatever and tick off anything that had martial arts and get my dad to tape it like yeah. one in the morning and yeah. that. I was obsessed. Um and so that carried well with bodybuilding when I got into that. But I think if you you would like that, you'll just apply that everywhere you go. 100%. I applied that from my childhood with that. I've applied it through some bad habits when I was a teenager. Oh, of course. You become obsessed get with like other that, things. With things that are not that good. <laughs> and then luckily bodybuilding pulled me away from a lot of them bad yeah. things when I was kind of as I was 18, as I was kind of coming away from it, there was a transition with that where it kind of carried over and I kind of pulled away when I was about 21. And now I've come out the back end of that, I'm mm. obsessed with things that I'm on with now, property, Business, devel property, property. development, my coaching company, mm. other things that I've got in the pipeline at the minute as well. I feel like bodybuilding, you need to have like a bit of an obsessive, like, um, like bit about you. Yeah, I don't think bodybuilding tends to people obsessive. I think obsessive people tend to bodybuilding. Exactly that. And yeah. that's why I don't think bodybuilding's for everyone. And like, it's it's great because bodybuilding is so popular now and everybody wants to do it. Especially the other categories. I feel like bikini was so popular at one point and now I feel like it's every category. Yeah, they're spread but, out a bit. I think as people have got more used to it. I think and the PCA have had a big hand in with that because... First timers. Yeah, and before that, like you won't remember, but there was, before PCA came, there was different... So NABBA did one thing. Yes. So NABBA was figure. Yes. And then... UKBFF did figure, but it's not really a thing. No. So UKBFF is what is two bros now. Yeah. But, and then they did bikini. And then if you asked a bikini girl to do figure, they'd be like, fuck off, tone figure. Yeah. And if you asked the other way around, they'd be like, I'm doing bikini. They yeah. don't even go to gym, Whereas blah, blah, blah. Now it's like... Whereas now it all got merged. The bikini girls got bigger. The figure girls got a little bit bigger. And then people now bounce from one to the other because yeah. it's not as like strange. Yeah. So I think the overall bringing women into it is like just spreading like that. And that's oh, why. yeah. I'd say the women's part is just as popular as the guys now. And more? I don't. Probably more. Probably more, yeah. yeah. But I, I was just saying like, it's quite sad because obviously it is so popular, but at the same time, it's it's like people will just jump into it really, really quickly and then you just yeah. see it trash a few people as well. Yeah, they do. Because I don't think people realise how fucking hard it is, man. Yeah. And how obsessed you have to be to nail it. But I was thinking this the other day, right? Because I was on, I don't know why I was thinking about it, but on social media, like you watch everyone and they compete and stuff like that. And I was just thinking back to how fucking hard it was when I was prepping like a few weeks out and all the rest of it and like how hard that actually is mm. and none of it's really portrayed like you just see people checking in you think i just i remember dragging my feet like them last couple of weeks man like i couldn't even be asked to get up to go for a Walking piss i'd be sat in the living room and i'd be thinking mm -hmm. fucking hell, i can't be asked to go for a piss like i feel like obviously with my youtube i know a lot of people did watch that like that popped off and obviously that's how a lot of people know about us and stuff but um I think even even I tried to be like really open and honest about it. Like I remember doing a YouTube video in my last prep right at the end and I was like, guys, this is why nobody prep this is why nobody films YouTubes towards the end of their show because it's really fucking hard <laughs> yeah. and you literally just feel like absolute shit. But even then I still feel like it's just you're never gonna know every single bit. Like I remember like on that prep walking crying, like I was honestly <laughs> fucked. It's <laughs> fucked, isn't it? Yeah. So fucked. I remember one because I used to go out and walk for my cardio because obviously I was pretty big and it not mm. hard to get my heart rate up. And I remember just one one particular morning, it sticks out out of all the years I competed this one morning after, and it was like an hour's walk, and I was thinking, I think I'm walking in mud. I don't why aren't yeah, my legs moving? It? I was just dragging mm. my legs. That was probably one of the worst. It's mad because like you just get it done anyway. Like it's yeah. not that bad when you're in it i guess but yeah like looking back i think how the fuck did i do yeah that? things have come on a lot as well now which is actually really good yeah like, everybody people, knows everything people's preps aren't as hard and no. now as i think there was like there was more savage or even 10 years ago it was like 
things change every year and things get a little bit better. I mean, you're never going to make it easy. It's not an easy it's, thing it's to do, but hard. I feel like we have a lot of tools now to help make the things The knowledge a lot around easier. it is so much mm. different. Yeah, mm. it was before it was just like no carbs, mm. loads of cardio, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, I think the women have come best out of that one. Right, have you got any other questions? I feel like we've gone off a bit of a tangent there. Oh. I love the fact we have Pepsi Max here as well. We were just saying this, weren't we? That would yeah. be on my rider. Thank you very much, Joe, Mr. Podcast Man. Right, so um, here's a good question that we got in from someone on the a anonymous. <laughs> um, <laughs> what does someone with potential to be a pro act like? Seems like you can make almost anyone do well and win at a show. Thank you very much. <laughs> but, but it can't be possible that they all, in capitals, have a winning mindset. What differentiates the big champs? This is a good question. What do you think? I think this is an interesting question because obviously, like you as a coaching business will always advertise the people that do well True. and like you will always share people who are doing well like obviously because that's part of the job right it's the same mm. with any coaching thing like you're going to share transformations with people but there'll be people that just fall off and don't follow the plan and and don't act like pros right you're just yeah. not screaming and shouting about it yeah 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 and yeah. i don't think this is spoken about enough yeah these people that fall off and stuff like that um, which is fine because it's not for everybody no it's not for everybody and it's really hard but I think amongst the people so let's let's disregard those people I suppose and then I suppose the people that are just still doing it mm. that are going to complete the task regardless of the different traits between them um, do you feel like someone can act like a pro do absolutely everything be obsessed with bodybuilding not miss a beat but also have a shit physique because of genetics Oh, yeah. Exactly. So, like, and yeah, some people yeah. have really good genetics and they'll literally, like, fall off plan. They'll be cheating on their diet. Yeah. And they still look good. Yeah, they still look good. But, caveat, which is what I always say, they look nowhere near as good as they could have. Could do. So, there's still these people, and I don't really have them clients, to be fair. There's you don't some, really work with that sort of person, do you, anyway? No, I, I, fall out of, I fall out of faith with them quite easily, but, um, which is another question that we've had further down, actually. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, so if someone's got great genetics and they do really, really well and they're falling off the plan, they'll still possibly be ready, but they won't look as good as they could have. True. Um, people can be unassuming, man. So obviously I've worked with lots and lots and lots of girls over the years and I've worked with lots and lots and lots of champions. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say they were all the same. I'd say they're all the same, but, but all different as well in different ways. Some people can be like super unassuming. So you'll have some people turn up and they'll be like, Dan, I want to smash it. I'm going to do this. I'll do anything. I'll eat Ted's. I'll drink piss. Jordan. Fucking eat nothing. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> she does it though. Um, blah, blah, blah. All this fucking stuff and like super intense. And like I used to think, wow, this person really wants to go all the way. I don't let it go into my head. No, of course. Anymore. You probably have just, no emotions towards yeah, it. Yeah, of just, course you I, can't. I take you what can't. comes to me. Yeah, because I've yeah. learned a lot of them people. <clears throat> whoops. A lot of them people three weeks later when their intensity is died off they just drop off mm. then somebody will just turn up and they'll just be like Thanks, yeah Sam. i want to do a show i want to do this blah 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 tell me what to do yeah yeah and just rail on a shoe in and then they just like smash it yeah they're just like machines and they just yeah. turn up yes fine yes fine yeah. yes fine what next what next what next yeah. but not even like in an intense way no just in a like, yeah they're cool, just like what's next? yeah what's next what's next what's next and it's like nothing yeah. to them so i really really like them people that's like megan Megan and Wax from Megan yes, Coach. Yeah, Megan yeah, yeah. Keevely, she out. just cracks on. She's one of them. Never. She was like, <laughs> I had to take a training off of her near the show on that last prep. I had she's to like, one Megan, deadlifts. We're like so close to the show. Because <laughs> obviously, I'm looking out for the feedback on the things like saying performance is starting to drop off. This is starting to happen, blah, blah, blah. And that's my cue to kind of step in and have a chat and then see about pulling the training volume right off and things like that. And then. Megan, it was just like, it was like, Fine. Two, it was about two weeks out. So I'm like, Meg, we're going to have to pull this down now. I know you're saying you're all right, but you can't. You can't, be. you can't. But I was speaking on. to Lee the other day and she said, I went and trained her and I was like, she was thinking, what the fuck? She was like three yeah. weeks out. <laughs> Some people are fucking mad. Yeah, she's one of them. But I think what they've all got in common, you included in this, obviously, is just that everyone's like doing it and they're doing it and they're doing it. And then they get to that point where it has to switch at the end. And that's where the weak fall from the shaft or whatever the saying is, or the strong just basically separate mm. from the weak. So it'll get to that point where it gets hard. Yeah, because a diet is a diet, but when it gets to that point where it's It's prep, just horrible, yeah. That, then last month, that last month or so, the dog shit cornetto, yeah. Yeah, the you dog shit You get to the bottom of the dog shit cornetto. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yeah, so, and then get to that, and then some of the weak starts to fall away, and then the strong people get that like, I um, don't know if this is politically correct, you but hit. somebody said this, it's like a bipolar energy. 
So they just like they don't care about sleep, they don't care no, about shit, they don't care, care about, about nothing. Anything. They're just fucking. You going. become like super resilient to everything. Like I yeah. always say this to people, like I feel like the kind of ten to maybe five weeks out is actually quite hard. Because yeah. It just feels like a really shit diet. Kind of. And then like good. I feel like champions, pros, people that get in actual condition. That last four weeks, some people were like, oh my God, it's got even worse. Whereas I think the flick switches and it's like, like fuck that. this. You literally feel like invincible. Yeah. I remember like my last show, like Jordan, obviously like we're really close. And she was like, mate, you're so fucking diced. You're on such low food and you're jumping around. Like you're absolutely fine. She was like, you're at this show, that show, you're doing this this weekend. I was driving around the country. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't give a fuck. Yeah. It's just like that energy. It's that yeah. crazy energy. You just that literally just go, yeah, it's just going to happen. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to get it done. I'll do whatever. It, like, it sounds like, oh, I always take the piss out. Oh, I'll do whatever it takes. But actually, it's yeah. literally like that. It is, yeah. And then after the show, <laughs> then everyone's like, I'm so exhausted. I don't understand. I'm like, I don't yeah, understand you why. I feel ran like through a bad way, man. That's yeah. why. You but you just, at the time, you just don't care. Yeah. So, yeah. And if that's, I, was, I think that's when the sport becomes a sport. I think that that's actually such a great part of the prep. That's the difference. I yeah. say that. I still say it to clients sometimes on, on the check-ins and like stuff. I'm like, this is the bit that separates who's going to come first, second, third, fourth. And yeah, fifth. because anyone can get lean. Yeah, anyone can get lean. But, but like to get stage lean is another kettle of fish mm. and hanging on in them. Waking up at the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning, your fucking belly feels like it's caving in. You can't get sleep properly, blah, 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 blah. All these things the that you need to resist. lack of brain power for me that I struggled with. I just, it, for me, it's the middle of the night one because that's, oh, that's yeah, the no one sleep. where like, I mean, I don't know how bad you was with this. You actually seem to sleep quite well, but I, <laughs> I used to get this. I used to wake up at two o'clock in the morning feel like someone's got needles, needles just ramming them in my stomach. And I used to think to myself, this is the bit. Yeah, you have to push nobody's past Nobody's there. No. Nobody's there. You're not in the gym showing off. You've not got your veins hanging out and blah, blah, blah. You're not on, I mean, social media wasn't so big then, but you're not on social media getting likes. There's no fuel that can like dopamine you past yeah. it. You've just got to take it and yeah. you're on your own. Because in that moment, a lot of people would go and cheat on their diet. Yeah, they go eat a box full of cereal yeah. or whatever. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And, and that's that, when you're literally by yourself and you think, right, this is where yeah. we get in condition. And that's them that show up in shape. It's kind of like a fucked up mindset of like, it's really shit, so this is good. We like double down. Yeah. We like double down on it. You're like, this is shit, right? Let's go harder. Yeah, let's literally <laughs> keep pushing. Yeah. So if I suppose if we were supposed to differentiate, there's a lot of different personalities in bodybuilding. I don't think there's a one size fits all on being a pro. No. I've worked with a ton of different personalities that do a ton of different things in their off seasons, act a different way, this and that, and, and the first, but they've all got that crazy at the end. They've mm. all got that crazy. I think that's probably what it is, the craziness at the end. Yeah, the last crazy You have bit. to be wired a bit differently to be putting yourself through that shit, trust yeah. me. Quick one on favourite female category. Mine would be... <clears throat> I'm actually gonna, just going to say my category. That's bad, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Because I actually love athletic figure and I think it's becoming more and more chiselled and incredible the last few years. Yeah. Like the standard now for athletic figure is a joke. Yeah. It creeps in that as well without you realising. I, I was looking back at some pictures from a couple of years ago earlier in the week, funnily enough, just to look for something. And I thought, wow, that was like, that but was the top end before. Now this, it's kind of moving a little bit if again. If I did a show, turn, <clears> if <throat> I turned up to a show looking like I did it that first time as now, I wouldn't even get first school routes done. You would, but you was not as lean as you would no need to way. be this year. But no. think about some of the people that turn up now in like first time yeah, shows. Yeah, it moves. And I think you'll see this over time as well. And it's happened before. It it moves a bit, it moves a bit, it moves a bit, it moves a bit. Then the Federation starts to think, hang on a minute. And then they kind Push of pull back. it back a little yeah. bit and then it resets. And then, because everyone turns up trying to be a bit, a little bit better than the people at the last show and a little bit of an edge and a yeah, little and bit more. Yeah, it's like, okay, well, when does like, it stop? Yeah, because there's no like solid land, you know what mm. I mean? Well, you can only judge what's in front you of you. You can only judge what's there and it's, it kind of creeps in and it happens across all federations in all categories and blah, 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 including men's physique and things like that. Mm. Then like, I think the IPB people are getting on top of it now, they put weight caps on Ye men's physique, uh, men's I think, physique. Stuff I think like they're that. actually looking for a smaller men's physique um, <clears throat> yeah, figure now. Massive, yeah, of course, it was just getting out of hand they literally look like bodybuilders yeah and when you look like like my mate ryan terry a few years ago when we went to see at the, the olympia he was like top five and the size difference in him now is insane so it'll do yeah. him it'll do him a favor actually i think yeah they they're down. definitely pushing down the physique yeah they need to, but but like, so it just shows it just small margins every year big creeping um, i think thing. with the bodybuilding thing it's like yes you've got to fit the category but also just turn up as your best yeah. Like I can look at someone's physique and be like, oh my God, that physique's amazing. But I wouldn't, want my, I wouldn't actually want my physique to look like that. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I want my yeah, physique yeah. to look like well, I want its one best version of mine. Like <laughs> right, what's women's. your favorite women's category then? I, I don't really have one. I actually like them all. Actually, I like do them. like I like them all in their own way. They're like children. I, I like, like them all in their own individual way. I don't have a favorite child. 
<laughs> Funny. I just like them all in their own way. Um, yeah, I like all of them. I like, I get a buzz off nailing the look. So to yeah. get a client, stick them in there, put them in that. You blah, know blah, when blah. like we're watching the shows and like your like it'll be your client's category, they just come out on you, just think, fucking yes, here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Nailed the it. You've been sat there with me when. Yeah, in it, I feel like your clients are my clients at <laughs> some shows. I'm absolutely buzzing. I'm literally messaging yeah, you like. Yeah, you walk out and it's just bang on you like, yeah, fucking go on it's like, then. here we go. And then I do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do my check. See if they beat everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> see yeah. if they beat everyone. Any more coming out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're going to win that. <laughs> We just sit next to each other and we're just or if, like... Or if someone good walks out, I think, fuck, who's that? Yeah, <laughs> and then you turn around, I'm like, oh, we're all right. No, we're good. <laughs> Great one. Yeah, we literally just sit there in like complete anticipation, don't we, at the yeah. show? It's so funny. Getting ready for all the nerve-wracking stuff to appear soon because we're back into the head of the season now, aren't we? I know, I'm excited, to be fair. Kicks off this weekend with mm. Wales. Um, and then obviously a lot of the federations get going as well. Mm-hmm. So that'll be me up and down the country every Sunday now for yeah, the foreseeable. And I feel like I'm probably going to be following you at some points. Yeah, I'll be in bin man mode before we know it. <laughs> we won't even get into that right next question. <laughs> it's funny because we literally like where we've become such good friends like we always speak about business and stuff on the phone don't we and yeah you're like oh my god and i'm like i'm thinking about this and i'm like oh my god i've been thinking about the same thing and we're like oh my god okay at least we're not alone in this. <laughs> yeah, at least i'm not going crazy yeah. <laughs> yeah you see someone with potential when judging are you allowed to approach forward slash nick them <laughs> yeah let's let's do that one yeah we'll touch on the judging thing i suppose right yeah let's do let's touch on the judging right yeah because obviously um people like how do you judge and coach at the same time and all that so let's explain how it works because you know because you see me in the middle yeah i think um that's one thing isn't it sometimes right so basically like dan you do well right you fucking kill it and then you know like bitter people like they'll be like oh well he's a judge so they're obviously gonna win yeah like it's his i literally i want to get my knife out and stab him myself (laughs) i think don't be talking about dw like that right and then i always say to you no one ever says anything bad to me and you're like yes because we're fucking best mates that's why (laughs) (laughs) yeah true I don't know the I don't know how they think it works. So to ex- they must be mad. I don't know. So if I've got a client in a show, just to explain to the people who are watching, if I've got a client in a show, clients in a show, I'll turn up at the show. I'll still judge the show, but I'll tell the one of the guys in the middle who's Jules, who, who thing is it? He'll say, "Have you got any in today?" And I'll go, "Yep." And then I'll tell him what categories, and then I will look for another judge to fill in them categories if we've got one there. That's it. Yeah, and you literally I'll wait come, for the away from come on. The I've got a list of the categories. The category comes off. Think right, that category is next. I fuck off. Yeah, go sit halfway back in the stadium somewhere, and then sit there shit my pants about what's going to happen next. Yeah, as you've sat. And I think you know. that some, yeah, like my it's shows. Not, I think they think it's like like I've gone along oh, to all mate, seven judges like, and gone number fifty seven. Yeah, and like realistically, <laughs> those judges don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's, like they don't actually like half the time. Like your client will come gonna, on stage and win, know. and then they'll be like, "Oh, was that your client?" Yeah, like I get it's that really as well, not yeah. that. Clicky. Or I'll get when I go back. Which one was yours? I'll yeah. get that quite a lot, but yeah, yeah because people so. just do their own thing. But like, it's really not that deep. Like, wow, like PCA and PCA, like they, they do obviously have you as a judge, but they obviously have other judges that judge that coach as well. Yeah, it's oh, just, it really annoys me. It really yeah, annoys it's just, me. I think it's like, it's, or he's just really good at his job. Like that's another yeah, option. Or he's a judge, so he knows the criteria is extremely well, so he knows how to put them on stage. So he's judged about a hundred shows. Maybe that's got something yeah, to do with it. it. He's been there a lot, and he knows what what the what the criteria are to look for. Yeah, any anything that's to do with you or any of your coaches, you'll always step away from the table anyway. Yeah, because why would, I won't be able to judge You wouldn't him want anyway. to judge him anyway, no. really. I'll always be like, I always be watching and thinking, right, how would I judge this? Is like in the crowd and then we think, right, I'd probably have him first. Let's reduce 10% for bias. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Because obviously I'm going to be biased. That's why yeah, you can't judge him. Can you possibly course, be biased? Course, yeah. Or on the flip side, I'll know where all the bad parts are. So I'll, I'll be, I'll have, obviously we're trying to get them to hard the bad parts. Yeah, of course. So I'll like, know we where all that. that is. And do you know? Because just, that's part of bodybuilding as well. Like obviously the benefit of you being a judge is that you know what the judges are looking at. So you can look at your client and go, that's a really shit shot. So try and stay. Like for me, front relaxed, we were like, keep out of that shot yeah, for as yeah. long as you possibly can. Yeah. So like, I would do my absolute all to make sure that I sat in that shot for like minimal time. Time. yeah and like that's just bodybuilding for you because it's that's, it's, it's, that's it's what it knowing is knowing how to kind of maneuver around yourself on stage to present the best thing and when you know yeah. exactly what you need to look for it's good to be able to coach for that so and that's the benefit that's something between, that you would have like you have that benefit been because you've been for judging eight years yeah of course I've done well over, it, well over 100 shows i've judged well over 100 yeah whereas like, a coach that's never judged before like they're not really thinking about what the judges are thinking about you know yeah exactly yeah. They, or they're trying to guess what is being seen from the judges table so 
Yeah, there's no conversing between anything. It's just, I do it, fuck off. What was that your question about judging now? Would you nick people? Oh, would I nick people? <laughs> How would I like, run up to them and just put them in the boat with my car? <laughs> I was thinking sometimes, like, we'll always chat post shows, won't we? Like, if we go. Sales and, talented and stuff. And yeah, like, we'll be like, that girl's really oh, fucking good. Oh, do you see good. that girl? She'd blah, blah. And if, if she like, nailed it, but yeah. I, could, I, I couldn't bring myself to, like. No, you'd never poach, but we no. always say, like, oh, imagine if she came to DW. <laughs> yeah, I wish, I wish I could, but I ain't got that. I, know, I think it's quite. Well, a lot of my clients, people try and poach them. Coaches are in there, like, yeah. burning their heads out saying things to them yeah and like, well I've had coaches trying to burn my head when we've been together yeah and a lot of the other girls tell me it as well I'm sure yeah. well, tons of it will happen that I don't know about this is just what I do know about they're like you should do this you should try that you shouldn't be really doing that I'm just just manipulating it's, it's bad funny it? but, but yeah, yeah no, I, I couldn't we, bring myself down to but that. isn't it funny how sometimes we'll talk about a certain competitor that's with a different coach and then literally like a couple months later you'll be like yeah. yes who yes, started yeah. I'm like no way <laughs> <laughs> there is a god yeah put um, it, what is it we manifest it put it out yeah we literally book. manifest it every time we're like right that girl <laughs> don't say anything <laughs> but if she asks <laughs> tell us yeah. a move <laughs> funny so are you going to some of the shows uh yes um pca midlands my friend rebecca edwards who i used to coach yeah yeah i think i've mentioned her a few times to you is she the one that's with sophie yes she's with sophie aj okay and um killing it this year killing it this year so i'm gonna go watch her um and maybe the manchester show next week yeah know a few people that are competing in that yes so that will be good uh british finals George shows. Obviously, she's doing IFBB. Yes. IFBB. Jordan's doing IFBA, FBF. Don't even fucking know how to say it. Not IFBA. But that, I'm IFBB. very much looking forward to that because obviously that's been a long time coming for her. I feel yeah. like I'm living my prep life through her. She looks good as well, man. She looks fucking great, man. And the thing is, I always said to her, if you come down and you look shit, I'll tell you that. Yeah, And yeah, I'm yeah. like, you honestly don't need to stress. No, I was like, how have you kept that much glute? Yeah, no. She... But yeah, no, I love it. Like, it does give me the itch a little bit, but mm, I just don't think I ever would. Live it through her. <laughs> Lira, don't That's do it to I do. yourself. I live it through my clients now. Yeah. Like, I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, but. I just feel like um what am I now? Twenty six. I feel like I'm getting on. Twenty six. Like this so I was always say I know I know you're older. We won't we won't talk <laughs> I like about you always this. fucking remind me right Yeah, it you're like you've literally made me out to be old. I was like, I'm really sorry. Yeah. I mean to like, do that. yeah, like you're my dad. I'm like <laughs> eleven years, what kind of fucked up place are you from where that's your dad? <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, I'm going to go older brother then. Yeah. Um, it's funny, actually, because uh, people will be like, oh, do you want to go back to competing? And I'll just be like, the thing, this is what would happen if I went back to competing, right? I'd get back on stage. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't do as well as I did last year. And then, so say I came like third, right? Still great, but let's just say I came third. I'll be like, right, well, fuck that then. I want to yeah. come first. And then, and then I would be year back, after year after year. Yeah. You have no reason to continue, to be fair. Nah, Unless nah. Unless you wanted a full pro career or whatever. Like an what IFBB pro card. Yeah, but I always said I never I never started it to be IFBB pro. No, a lot of people I don't. don't. Really, I don't think I'd even put it in my bio. <laughs> so it's pretty pointless. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, that's what it's but for. yeah, no, do you know what? I still love bodybuilding. It's so good. I've obviously met some amazing people. Like we have a friendship from bodybuilding as well. Um, so yeah, forever grateful for it. And like I just love that people still will use my competing journey like for motivation. I still and get stuff. it the other day. I got a sign up the other day and she said uh, on the uh, questionnaire thing, I bit I watched all George's YouTube and I decided <sighs> I really want to do this, blah blah blah. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I think there was someone that went to your posing seminar last week and she was she tagged me in a post and she was like Yes. Did you, did you saw, see it? That, and yeah. she was like she like wrote this massive caption about it and I was just like, oh it's so nice. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. George's YouTube, it's still there. It is still you can there. Watch it if you all don't know what the hell it is. Yeah, it's fun. if you ever want to watch a full prep, like yeah. two full preps, and a first really. time is prep. First time is prep, and uh, well, um, a little bit of no, a pretty much a pro. Even prep. I ended up watching it. Remember when I didn't know you did a YouTube? Yeah, because it probably took about <laughs> two, three months. I think I was up seeing you, and you and I said something about YouTube. Oh, I'm filming for YouTube, and you were like, "Oh, you have a YouTube." I was like. I am not about twenty thousand people have already watched you at yeah. this point. <laughs> for people watching, I'm not the most on it with social media. Well, I'm, you I'm, are now. I'm not bad, but I didn't. I just. I don't care. No, I don't care. no, no, no. So I've got this client called Georgie Fit, and she just puts it on YouTube. A few months later, she's up at whole whatever for a face face checking, and she's like, "I've got YouTube," and I'm like, "Cool, cool. you got a YouTube, all right." <laughs> And then she put me on it, so I thought, I better watch it to make sure I looked all right. Thousands of people And I looked like it. I had a mental disability oh on the my first God. one. That but, was the day but, that we taught you how to look at the camera. Yeah, because I wasn't looking at the camera. <laughs> that was so funny. That was literally the best. Um, so I thought, watch I thought, fuck me, a lot of people watch this mm. bastard. 
And I can't remember what I said. I was like, there's a lot of people that we better get this right. And he was like, you better get this yeah. right. <laughs> I was like, pressure's a privilege. <laughs> no worries. I'm sound. I'll be right. Um, I think on average, those uh, episodes got like 15,000 views. So that's good, man. Yeah. You know, never know. Maybe one day. But yeah, YouTube is still up there if anybody ever wants to watch a prep. Yeah. And now we're back in this YouTube form. We've mm. won. The, what what we called it the podcast no with, with the podcast nobody asked for yes but you're getting it anyway and we will see you in the next episode yes see you soon.